On Wednesday, Vince Parker taught a message based on a pretty tough psalm. Now, if you don't know, psalms are like Old Testament songs. And when you read them, you can get the sense that some are upbeat, like a dance party remix to your favorite song. We are here, we are partying in the presence of the Lord. But others are pretty emotional. And if you had to give Psalm 22, the psalm we looked at on Wednesday, a genre, it would be a tragic ballad. There's all this brutal imagery and heavy feelings. And yet Vince shared that there is power in the processing process. Where can we find that power? You'll have to stick around to find out. What's up, Bible nerds? I'm Caitlin, and I am really excited to be here with you today and dive a little deeper into the scripture from Wednesday's message. There was a lot going on there. Here are some of the excerpts from Psalm 22 that we looked at on Wednesday says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. They've pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. My enemies stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among themselves and throw dice for my clothing. Okay, David opens with, my God, why have you abandoned me? And David is talking to the God who promised to never leave or forsake his people. And this is what he starts with. It's pretty bold, but it's also honest. And what you need to know is it's safe to be honest with God. The level of upsetness here, the shame and the hurt that David are feeling is palpable. But what you need to know is that these emotions are not the enemy of your faith. Even though David habitually processed stuff like this, he's still called a man after God's own heart. See, his feelings weren't a barrier in his relationship with God. They were actually a bridge. And that's why we say that there's power in the process because our emotions submitted to God are actually a bridge for bringing us back to his heart. And this is especially evident and powerful in Psalm 22. Why? Because David is processing his emotions, yes. And at the same time, he is prophesying about what will happen to Jesus. Matthew 27, starting in verse 35, says this, after they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus's head, announcing the charge against him. It read, this is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their head in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well, then, if you are the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mocked Jesus. As he saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he's the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now and we'll believe him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama septhiki, which means my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? See, what Jesus does is he quotes David as he's hanging on the cross. And the thing is, every one of those priests, those elders, and those teachers of the law would have known exactly what Jesus was referring to. 
See, the Jewish people would memorize these songs that we call psalms. And you know, when someone says a line from a song that you know and love, like some of you Taylor Swift, or maybe some Harry Styles, you better believe you can finish the whole song. So the rest of this psalm would have played immediately in these people's minds. They would have looked up and seen the exposed bones from the beating that Jesus had endured. They could have watched while Roman soldiers cast lots. They threw dice for his clothes. And they would have been able to recall their own mocking words spoken just moments before. In short, these people are watching this ancient song from King David come to life through a man hanging on a cross with a sign that read, Jesus, King of the Jews, over his head. See, there's power in the process because when we choose to bring our questions, our emotions, our feelings, and our pain to God, what he's so faithful to do is lead us to Jesus every time because Jesus is the one who gets us. This is from Hebrews 4. It says, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So what do we do when we have feelings that feel like the weight of the world? Well, we bring them to God. We process them in his presence and with his people. And man, we press into Jesus, who understands our hearts better than anyone in the whole world. That's all I have for you guys today. Keep on reading your Bibles and stay nerdy.